I'm continuing my reading, and what I'm doing in this series is to read through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I am reading in a chronological order of events, not according to publication or volume, so I will be skipping around a bit as I move along. Right now I am still in Deuteronomy. This will be chapter 16. Israel shall keep the Passover, also the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks, and the Feast of Tabernacles. All males shall appear annually before the Lord at these three feasts. Judges shall not rest judgment nor take gifts. Again, more review, but let us get to it. Observe the month of Abib, and keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. For in the month of Abib, Abib the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of Egypt by night. Thou shalt therefore sacrifice the Passover unto the Lord thy God of the flock and the herd, in the place which the Lord sh shall choose to place his name there. Thou shalt eat no leavened bread with it. Seven days shalt thou eat unleavened bread therewith, even the bread of affliction. For thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt in haste, that thou mayest remember the day when thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt all the days of thy life. And there shall be no leavened bread seen with thee in all thy coast seven days, neither shall there anything of the flesh which thou sacrificest the first day at even remain all night until the morning. Thou mayest not sacrifice the Passover within any of thy gates which the Lord thy God giveth thee. But at the place which the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name in, there thou shalt sacrifice the Passover at even, at the going down of the sun, at the season that thou, comest, that thou camest forth out of Egypt. And thou shalt roast and eat it in the place which the Lord thy God shall choose, and thou shalt turn in the morning and go unto thy tents. Six days thou shalt eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day shall a solemn assembly to the Lord thy God shall be a solemn assembly unto the Lord thy God. Thou shalt do no work therein. So, again, this is just a review of the feast. I think I'm just going to read this. I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk about it right now. So, seven weeks shalt thou number thee, uh, shalt thou number unto thee. Begin to number the seven weeks from such time as thou beginnest to put the sickle to the, to the corn. And thou shalt keep the feast of weeks, unto the Lord thy God, with a tribute of a free freewill offering of thine hand, which thou shalt give unto the Lord thy God, according as the Lord thy God hath blessed thee. And thou shalt rejoice before the Lord thy God, thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy manservant and thy maidservant and the Levite that is within thy gates, and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow that are among you in the place which the Lord thy God hath chosen to place his name there. And thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in Egypt, and thou shalt observe to do these statutes. Interesting. As thou beginnest to put the sickle to the corn. I'm not sure if that's talking about... Sounds like it's talking about harvest time. But... Um, seven weeks, of course, is 49 days, making the next day the 50th day Pentecost. So that's what we're getting to. Pretty sure that that's the harvest time. Anyways, I can't. I did a video about the feasts, and I'm just going to leave that uh, so you can refer back to that. Verse 13 Thou shalt observe the feast of tabernacles seven days after that thou hast gathered in thy corn and thy wine. And thou shalt rejoice in thy feast, thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy manservant and thy maidservant and the Levite and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow that are within thy gates. Seven days shalt thou keep a solemn feast unto the Lord thy God in the place which the Lord shall choose, because the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thine increase, and in all, thy, and in all the works of thy hands. Therefore thou shalt surely rejoice. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, in the feast of unleavened bread, and in the feast of weeks, and in the feast of tabernacles. And they shall not appear before the Lord uh, empty. 
Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he hath given thee. So again, this is talking about three times a year everybody's supposed to gather at the temple. Now it doesn't say the temple. It says where the Lord God places his name. And it doesn't specify that there will only ever be one such place. So as I've said in other videos, there is evidence that there were different places that people could go. Although the central place was the temple. Verse 18. Judges and officers shalt thou make thee in all thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, throughout thy tribes. And they shall judge the people with just judgment. Thou shalt not rest judgment. Thou shalt not respect persons, neither take a gift. For a gift doth blind the eyes of the wise and pervert the words of the righteous. That which is altogether just shalt thou follow that thou mayest live and inherit the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not plant thee a grove of any trees near unto, any, near unto the altar of the Lord thy God, which thou shalt make thee. Neither shalt thou set thee up in any image which the Lord thy God hateth. A couple of things real quick. So, uh, polluting judgment, taking bribes, uh, giving different judgment based on, people, on the... Uh, person's prestige or political or social position all of it is forbidden but i find that if no thou shalt not plant a grove of trees near the altar now according to the alternate tra hebrew translation right here it says thou shalt not plant thee a grove of trees now the alternate hebrew translation says Thou shalt not plant thee an Asherah of any kind of tree beside the altar. And then it says an Asherah was a fertility idol made of a tree trunk. In other words, it was basically, um, you would, they, they would plant trees and then they would carve an idol into the living trunk. That's what the groves were. When it talks about the groves, that's what it's talking about. And it's fertility rites, fertility gods. These are uh, very much sexual things. You know, uh, holy prostitutions where you would go and have sex as your means of worship. And it's saying, don't, don't, don't even get this stuff near the altar of God. Don't plant trees near the near god's altar so that we don't even give the appearance of copying these fertility cults this is make no image this is pill, uh, uh, alternate hebrew translation is a pillar which would be set up with the idol on it as a as a place of worship is it no even if it was an image of god himself i mean as i said in a previous video god didn't let them see what he looked like because he didn't want them making any images because if you have an image, then it is natural, it is easy for the human mind to give that image more meaning than what it's supposed to symbolize. So we leave all of that out. And I'm going to leave that there. I'll see you in the next one.